videos. Monday, 30th, October 2017. Green Mellon. Come on. Call him again. Come on. Hi Graham, just try this number again uh, whenever you're ready. 0272813963. Um, and, and I'll email you the documents uh, all together. Okay, thank you. Bye. Well, that's that. Um, I'll try money here now. Oh man, I ran out of talking to anybody. One day I'll talk to anybody. Money. Yeah, try that again. Magic. Hit me. Come on, Skinner. No one home. Okay, that's fine. Right, we're going to get on with the work. And um, I'll download all these documents now. Uh, while I'm on this, I'll, um, I'll explain this. I'm going to read it. I'm, I'm going to read it what, what it, what I'm saying in here. We'll go start from the first page. Right, I might as well do this. Make a statement to the world and the British. Uh, um, um, establishment that uh, um, put this together, put this book to send to you, and from my humble, humble little abode, and I want to say that we had this uh, meeting up in Titi Marae, which is a connection to Westminster um, government, um, on the 28th of October 2017, the Declaration of Independence Day on the 1835. And also the Declaration of War Day, that's on the 10th of March, um, 1834, the founding of New Zealand with this flag here. Okay, so um, speaking as the surrogate King William III, the surrogate King William IV, um, and um, King George IV, and in Ernest Augustus, King Ernest Augustus I, the three sons of King George III, in that line of monarch um, bloodlines, uh, in Salic law, um, for, forbidding women to um, succeed to the throne or inherit the throne while these kings are still alive. And the king here, Ernest Augustus V, is alive at about 64 years of old, and the eight point star that he's wearing is the eight point star that I wear on this hat here as the authority to this flag in the four corners of the earth of the St. Patrick's Order of Church in Belfast, um, Northern Ireland, my ancestors there, the Cosgroves and the Rogans coat of arms, which is me, and the Moai statue, which is me, right there, from Tahiri, um, Rapa Nui, to Mokonui, at the east coast on my land blocks, North Ireland, New Zealand, Ulster, Northern Ireland, to Ulster, Belfast, Protestant Church, and my ancestors there with this eight point star, St. Patrick, and the St. Mary's Church in Tiki Tiki, um, straight to uh, the St. Mary's Church in Edinburgh, um, up the road from the Edinburgh Magistrate Court, the Freemasons, and the titles 
to Tera Wakato Whare Herehere Manukau Moriori Paramount Chief that's standing right here where my finger is, okay? Next to Hongihika, Paramount Chief of Cook Island, Tahitian, Mohi, uh, Cook Island, Tahitian, Napui Chiefs, okay? The Moriori, Tera Wakato Whare Herehere Manukau put the title together in South New Zealand and Pacific Islands to King George the Fourth. Well, I'm going to read this out. We swore this and signed it. The four paramount chiefs, myself, has been Maui, Crown, Federal State, Commonwealth Government of the World, dual government with British Westminster and the British Royal Navy, First Lord of the Sea, Sir um, Jones. Uh, oh, I forgot. Anyway, um, Philip Jones. So Philip Jones, First Lord of the Sea, is our legal partner, ship of Admiralty, to the Paramount Chiefs. Bundy Waitai, uh, descendant, bloodline direct descendant to Hongihika, Cook Island, Tahitian, and Manahi Parapara Mohini, direct bloodline descendant to Moriori Paramount Chief Tira Waikato Whare Herehere Manukau and Hiruini Kraka, natural man and direct descendant to his ancestors Selwyn Clark, straw man name in capitals he says but that's his ancestors in Britain we are partners together with the Maui Crown Rapa Nui Tahitian native title in the Magistrate Court, Native Magistrate Court in Awaroa, Native Magistrate Court, Hillsborough. Direct to Edinburgh Magistrate Court in Scotland, direct to Westminster Native Magistrate Court in Westminster City, Paddington in England. So that's our connection to this Titi Marae, Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court, linked to Te Unga Waka Native Magistrate Court in Auckland, Epsom, New Zealand, and connected to Taheke Native Magistrate Court in Taheke, west of Kaikoi. Half an hour from there is a Native Court that these papers are going into through Ratna, the Ratna, and the Ratna Haki flag, right there. Okay, so that's our latest announcement to make that I'm linking this straight to Westminster Magistrate Court and Westminster Parliament and Government. Theresa May, Prime Minister, and First Prime Minister of Northern Ireland, leader of the DUP party, Arlene Foster, my Protestant family connection with the Maui King William party in Westminster at Taylor, looking after my powerhouse group, limited, limited business, registered in London, and the Maui King William Party. So here's our connection there and Jackie and Andy Little of Gordon are the administrators of the Maui Powerhouse Group Limited Limited Company in Scotland. <coughs> um, so that's our um, management there for these documents in New Zealand and Edinburgh Magistrate Court records of native titles in the world and they're up the road from there in Balmoral um, living on their estate there okay right here we go frame laws of Maui Crown King William for Federal State Parliament of New Zealand and we've got the 18 
52 Constitution. Framing the laws from these acts of King William IV, 1832 to 1837, enforced laws over New Zealand government, Crown corporations, corrupt, fraudulent, fraudulent politicians, courts, police, navy, lawyers, barristers, judges, churches, and state Crown agents. So that's the first page. Stamp with an I, seal, and stamp with the two chiefs and King William IV and Bishop Thomas Kendall photos. Okay, so that's the first page. The second one is the area of practice, federal litigation, tax laws, uh, evidence, civil procedures, criminal law and procedures, business and corporate law, intellectual property law, securities law, labour and employment law, governments, constitutional law, estate gift and trust law, patent law, military and veteran law, corporate law, real estate law, copyright law, administrative law, elders law, litigation, social security disability, health care law, statutes, civil practice and procedure, state, contract law, trademark law, attorney's fees, insurance law. That's page two. Okay. So I'll just knock them out one by one so that you... I'm, I'm making these statements on video as cited fact evidence. Energy and utilities law, utilities law, workers' compensation and SSDI law, entertainment law, banking law, mental disability, antitrust and trade law, general practice, immigration law. Now, all of those are the jurisdiction of the federal state government, uh, Maui Crown, okay? Debtors, creditors, law, money, management, uh, money judgments, fraud, third party and liens, product, product details. So it goes debtor, creditor, law, money, de judgments, fraud, third parties and liens, provides current case law, practical guidance and numerous forms of key topics pertaining to third party obligations such as injury, usury, guarantee, guarantee, suretyship, subrogation and fraudulent conveyances. That's where we have conveyances with Cook Street, Jim Sam's Cook Street and satisfaction of obligations through non-judicial remedies such as self-help repossession. That's what we're doing, self-help repossession. Mechanics liens and statutory liens as well as through possessory proceedings. That's what we're doing, possessory proceedings such as attachment, garnishment, reprovision and mortgage foreclosure written by prominent scholars and practitioners in practical commercial law, debtor, creditor, law. Money management fraud third party provides important resources in the forms of expert analysis, practical guidance and numerous forms on, on a variety of topics relating to debtor creditor matters. Table of contents. Count one. These are the counts that we're holding over the New Zealand government and their crown corporations, private companies and agents. Count one. Confession of judgment. Count two. Trial strategies and strategies and techniques for commercial lawsuits. Count three, enforcement of money judgments, objectives and restrictions. Count four, collection, collecting money judgments, priorities and procedures. Count five, constitutionally of attachment, garnishment, reprovision and um, execution. Count six, attachment. Count seven, income garnishment. Count eight, reprovision. Count 9, fraudulent convention. Count 10, usury. Count 11, guarantee. Count 12, suretyship. Count 13, subrogation. Count 14, escrowies. escrowies. Count 15, mechanics liens on real property. That's that one. Okay. And then we go to count 14, miscellaneous statutory liens. Count 17, federal tax liens, count 18, mortgage foreclosure, count 19, self-help repossession. That's the one we're using, count 19, self-help repossession. We're doing that to Cook Street and to the land blocks at Titi Marae and Watangi Marae. And the ship, we're seizing those under this count. Self-help repossession. Count 20, community property. That's just community's property we're taking off the Queen. Um, right, judgment, credit, uh, financial, we'll sign here with our King, Ernest Augustus V. Right here, and a 970 million trillion trillion pound note over all the third party debtors. Judgment of debtors. We are the judgment creditors. Okay, anybody who's got these documents 
uh, judgment creditors in a native magistrate court. The real native commercial landowners. Okay, a party to which a debt is owed that has proved the debt in a legal proceedings and that is entitled to use the judicial process to collect the debt, the owner of an unsatisfied court decision. That's Cook Street. They'll be notified long enough. The, and a party that wins a monetary award in a lawsuit is known as a judgment creditor. That's us, the Paramount Chiefs and myself, in this court. Until the award is paid or satisfied, the losing party, which may must pay the award is known as judgment credit uh, debtor. A judgment creditor is legally entitled to enforce the debt with the assistance of the court. We have our own court because the court failed to honor me in my court case and left me out of the court. Right? They didn't pull me into the court to be have my day in court. Where we have my day is in a uh, native court now because of that. State laws provide remedies to a judgment creditor in collecting the amount of the judgment. These measures bring the debtor's property into the custody of the court in order to satisfy the debtor's obligations. They involve the seizures of property and money. The process of enforcing the judgment debt in this way is called execution. We have our own execution acts here. I'll show you, I'll show you afterwards. <coughs> the execution act of King William IV. The process commences with the hearing called a supplementary proceeding. The judgment debtor is summoned to appear before the court for a hearing to determine the nature and value of the debtor's property. If the property is subject to execution, the court orders the debtor to relinquish it. Because debtors sometimes fail to surrender the property to the court, other means of satisfying the debt may be necessary. In these cases, the law refers to the unsatisfied execution, an outstanding and unfilled order by the court for the property to be given up. That's what we are. We are the highest court in the land here and the world. Usually this will lead to the judgment creditor to seek a writ of attachment. We got writ of execution. The legal means by which property is seized. To secure a writ of attachment, the judgment creditor must first place a judgment lien on the property, also called an encumbrance. A lien is a legal claim on the debtor's property that gives the creditor a qualified right to it. Creditors holding liens are called secured creditors. The writ of attachment sets in motion the process of a levy by which the sheriff or other state official actually seizes the property and takes it into the physical possession of the court. The property can then be sold to satisfy the debt. Now, this is the sheriff. That's just stated there. I'm the sheriff, okay? I'm the only sheriff in this country that can do this and enforce these laws and seize the property. Another process for recovery is garnishment, which targets the judgment debtor's salary or income, though garnishment, a portion of the through garnishment, a portion of, of the judgment debtor's income is regularly deduced and paid to the judgment creditor. The creditor is known as the garnisher and the debtor is in garnish E. Further reading, Stephen Stevens, then 1996 Proceedings, Supplementary and Uniform Fraudulent Transfer Act, dual remedies to execute against the judgment debtor's transferred assets. Florida Bar Journal, 20 January. Okay, so the judgment creditor, the winning plaintiff in a lawsuit to whom the court decides the defendant owes money. Judgment creditor can use various means to collect the judgment. The judgment is good for a specified number of years and then may be reviewed by file request. If the defender, defendant debtor files for bankruptcy, bankruptcy, the judgment creditor will have the priority, the right to share in assets ahead of the general creditors who are not secured by mortgages or deeds or trusts and do not have judgments. However, if the bankrupt person has no assets, this becomes an empty advantage, judgment, prevailing party, creditor's rights. So, there, I'm just saying, we frame the laws, we've got laws already in place to seize property. Okay, Federal Parliament, we go on to the Federal Parliament, um, uh, Auckland Native Magistrate Court, Marae, New Zealand, is a Federal Parliament. New Zealand has won Federal States Commonwealth Parliament of the World in 250 countries trading under Maui Crown, King William IV, British 1834 Declaration of War, State of Emergency, Sovereign Monarch Ruling Authority flag. 
<coughs> located in, I've got located in Canberra in an Australian capital territory. So located in New Zealand and it's in Australia, our flag is flying over there anyway uh, and we have indigenous natives there to deal with after this Canberra and I'm using the Australian federal state um, um, format because we are federal state with a flag that they don't have to go right over the top of them. So we're going over the top of there, uh, Melbourne, um, <coughs> here, Canberra in Australia, Capital Territory. It is part of our national government, the highest law-making body in the land and the institution that most Australians think of as the government. The Federal Parliament was formed by the Constitution which came into legal effect in January 1901. See, ours is 1852 Constitution, way before they bought this out in 1901. The first Federal Parliament met in, met in the Exhibition Building, Melbourne, then Australia's largest city in May 1901. For its first 26 years it was located in Exhibition Building, Melbourne. Uh, in Melbourne's Parliament Building in Spring Street meeting with the Victorian Parliament was not in session. In 1927 the Melbourne's Parliament Building on Spring Street meeting with the Victorian Parliament was not in session. In 1927 Melbourne's um, moved, Melbourne Parliament, Federal Parliament moved the new building in Australian Capital Territory now Old Parliament House. See the white building in the foreground of the picture right. Right, so that's just making a statement that the federal state government in Australia is subjected to our federal state flag. Uh, House was open. The federal parliament, like any other Australian parliament, is much a, a, much a model of the British parliament that also contains some elements of the United States Congress. Our federal parliament is by, um, by, by some material. By Meryl, the ceremony, it is comprised of two separate houses or chambers. These are the House of Representatives, also called the Lower House, or the People's House, and the Senate, also called the Upper House, or the State's House. The political party that enjoys a majority of the House of Representatives is considered to be the government of the day, and that party leader becomes the Prime Minister. The House of Representatives and the Senate are both involved in making passing legislation and no bill can be come, become law unless it is passed by both. However, there are some fundamental differences between both houses of parliament. So we are an upper house of our own in the Maui Crown Federal State Commonwealth Government of the World with Britain. We are using the British laws in this Constitution Act 1852 right there. Okay, King up there, eight point star, King William fourth, and two chiefs and the flag. That completes, and these acts of King William IV, completes the license to operate. Page 85 notes, the Auckland province took in three native magistrate admiralty bank courts under Captain James Reedy Clendon, Royal British Navy resident of Okiato Native Magistrate Court, Bank Kurarika in Russell Bay of Islands, Aurora Native Magistrate Court, Bank in Hillersville, and Whakawhitira Native Magistrate Court in Hiruharama, Mount Hikarani Waipu District, East Cape Tikitiki, St. Mary's Church, 1831, birth, deaths, marriages, bond on the stock market, New York, under King William IV Admiralty Jurisdiction, 1830-1837, Sovereign Monarch Title. Today, Saturday, the 21st of October, 2017, I am framing these laws for the Whakamania, six regions for the Original provinces of New Zealand, with the Moriori Paramount Chief Ref Ref Manika, direct descendant British commercial landowner, transfer in the Aurora Native Magistrate Court of Admiralty, Aurora Bank, on his 10 acre land block in Hillersville, Kaipara, southwest Auckland, New Zealand, linked to the Edinburgh Magistrate Court of Admiralty, Bank of England, in Scotland, with Paramount Chief Tira Waikato Wharehere Manikau, Crown Land Patent Seller, and the Magistrate. Lieutenant, Lieutenant William Simon's 23rd Regiment, 1822-1830 Sale and Purchase Agreement in private contract with King George IV Crown Land Patent Buyer, the buyer from Kilowakato, the seller, in Westminster Magistrate Court of Admiralty Bank in Westminster City, Parliament, Britain, 
UK. I am the Paramount Chief Executive of the Moriori Manukau Commercial Private Contract Trust in Awaroa and Edinburgh, Scotland, UK. E contracts with King George IV <coughs> Crown Lane Patent Buyer in Westminster Magistrate Court of Admiralty, Bank of Westminster, City, Parliament, Britain, UK. I am the Paramount Chief Executive of the Moriori Manukau Commercial Private Contract. The Trust in Akaroa, Awaroa and Edinburgh, Scotland, UK. So there's the map of the area from way up north, the top, down past Lake Taupo, uh, straight across, and that's the Auckland provincial area of three magistrate courts, uh, native magistrate courts in New Zealand, that started off the native titles in the whole world from that. Judgment debtor. This is a judgment debtor. A party against which an unsatisfied court decision is awarded, that's Cook Street, 77 Cook Street, and John Key, a person who is obligated to satisfy a court decision. The term judgment debtor describes a party against which a court has made a monetary award. If a court renders a judgment involving money, damages and losing party must satisfy the amount of the award, which is called a judgment debt. Such a decision gives the, decision gives the winner of the suit or judgment creditor the right to recover the debt or award through extraordinary means and the court may help the creditor to do so. We got our own court. So state law governs how the debt may be recovered. Although the recovery process can be harsh, we are harsh, the law provides the debtor with certain rights and protection. He's got no rights. He's been caught out for fraud and treason and deception. <coughs> and that requires a state of emergency or a declaration of war to cordon off the whole area as a threat zone to us, the Paramount Chiefs and the Public of New Zealand. Following the verdict, other legal steps are usually taken against the judgment debtor. The court can order the debtor to appear for an oral hearing and to assess, as, assess the debtor's assets. If it is determined that the debtor has assets sufficient to satisfy the judgment debt, the court may order the debtor to surrender certain property to it. Commonly, the judge, judgment creditor must take additional legal action. This involves seeking the court's assistance in seizing the debtor's property by the process known as attachment or a portion of the debtor's salary by the process called garnishment. You see, we did this and they failed to respond and they're still not responding. For centuries, attachment of property was called ex parte without first allowing the defendant debtor to argue against it. We had plenty of time to argue against it and they won't. However, the contemporary law affords the debtor some protection. The debtor has the right to minimal due process. States generally require that the judgment creditor first secure a writ of attachment, that the debtor be given notice before the seizure occurs, and that the debtor have the right to a prompt hearing afterward, afterward to challenge the seizure. Other protections apply to both property and wages. First, for every kind of property is subject to attachment. States provide exemptions for certain household items, clothing, tools and other essentials. Additional provisions may protect individuals in cases of extreme hardship. Where the creditor seeks garnishment in order to seize the property, the debtor's wages, law, <coughs> laws generally exempt or a certain amount of salary that is necessary for personal or family support. Courts can exercise their discretion to go beyond the statutory protections for judgment debtors. They can exempt more property from the attachment than that specified in a statute. In some cases, they can do also deny the attachment or garnishment altogether. This can occur when the creditor seeks more in property than the value of the judgment debt or where the property sought is an ongoing business that would be destroyed by the attachment. So now, judgment that are the losing defendant in a lawsuit who owes the amount of judgment to the winner, judgment creditor. So there we go, that's that's that page, and we're getting through them. <coughs> and we got here the Federal Parliament changes to legislation, Crimes and Courts Act 2013, Section 25, is up to date with all the changes known to be enforced before the 21st of October 2017. There are charges that may be brought into force at a future date. Charges that have been made appear in the content and are references, reference with annotations. Help about 
changes to legislation. The structure of Moai Crown, King William IV, Federal Parliament of New Zealand, Federal Parliament, Parliament House, Tet Auckland, Te Unga Waka Marae, Native Magistrate Court from duly authorised Marae in New Zealand. Okay, so, so this is the court. Um, I'm, I'm going to read this out because it's very really important. This page. New Zealand has one federal state's Commonwealth Parliament of the world in 250 countries trading under the Maui Crown, King William IV, British, and 34 Declaration of War States of Emergency, Sovereign, that's the flag, Sovereign Monarch Ruling Authority flag. Okay, so we'll leave that there, as I've said that before. Notes in the Auckland province took in three native magistrates, Admiralty Bank Courts under Captain Jane Freddie Clinton, Royal British Navy resident of Okiato Native Magistrate Court Bank, Court of Arlecha in Russell, Bear Islands. <coughs> oh, we said that before, so that's that page stamped and initial. And then we go down to today, Saturday, 21st of October, framing laws for the Whakamininga regions of the original provinces of New Zealand with Moriori Paramount Chief Reverend of Manukau, direct descendant British com commercial landowners, transferred in the Awaroa Native Magistrate Court of Admiralty Awaroa Bank on his 10 acre block, land block, in Hellersville, Kaipara South, West Auckland, New Zealand, linked to the Edinburgh Magistrate Court of Admiralty Bank of England in Scotland with Paramount Chief Kira Waikato Wharehede in Manukau, Crown Land Patent Seller and the Magistrate Lieutenant William Simons, 23rd Regiment, 1830 uh, Sale and Purchase Agreement in private contract with King George IV, Crown Land Patent Buyer in Westminster Magistrate Court of Admiralty Bank in Westminster City <coughs> Parliament, <coughs> Britain, UK. I'm the Paramount Chief Executive of the Moriori Manukau Commercial Private Contract Trust in Aguador and Edinburgh, Scotland, UK. So there we go. We, we have this document going running through again. Um, oh, here. Oh, here. The Maui Crown, I have framed laws, enforced jurisdiction of Maui Crown, King Spence Marae, Native Magistrate Court, Epsom, Auckland, New Zealand, 27th of October 2017. This is just before the 28th when we signed the documents on the 28th. The Maui Crown King William IV Trust is a duly authorised private contract shareholding cooperative organisation of the Paramount Chiefs in a original Moriori British UK New Zealand Pacific dual government administratorship and executor of the Moriori Manukau Trust UK New Zealand private contract organisation which was first established in Edinburgh Magistrate Court Scotland in 1820 to 1830 came first into Awaroa Native Magistrate Court of New Zealand in Pacific Islands in Helensville, Kaipara Harbour, the Maui Crown Land Patents British UK established the King's Bench Bank Native Magistrate Court of New Zealand in Pacific Islands, World Order Organisation in Epsom, Auckland, New Zealand extended from the 1820 King George IV to, to 18, 1830 to his brother King George King William IV, Admiralty Court Martial Law, Trading Bank flag, flag, Sovereign Authority, Jurisdiction 1830 to 1837, Cut-off Period 1834, Declaration of War flag against the third party pirates and threats against the national interests of Public of New Zealand and the Paramount Chief's two-party business contract partnership with King William IV and the Paramount Chief's British, UK, New Zealand, Commonwealth countries executives now enforce these 1830 to 1837 Acts under head of King William IV Westminster Parliament 1834 Declaration of War, State of Emergency, Financial Bank Creditors, Writ of Execution, Possession and Control Property Arrest Warrants. Writ of Execution Act 1833 C67. That's the writ we're going under for Cook Street and for Titi Marae and Waitangi Marae, all those land blocks. Cheek. And the land blocks at Long Point Motel and Rangitukia, Haho 7B, and Hiringa, A12, A11, A10, A8, land blocks off Port Awanui, Rotoria East. Okay. Termination of New Zealand Land Lease Default Contract Acts under the British, British UK, 1852 UK Constitution Land Laws of England, legitimate and legal authority for the native paramount chiefs, sheriffs, native, Magistrate courts to charge the judgment debtors 
under the Execution of Judgments Act 1831 C7, I'm making these statements, cited evidence, you're cited under this Act of King William IV, <coughs> 1837 Acts, Execution of Judgments Acts, 1831 C7, we're using this Act right now to seize the property, the land and all the business assets and lock them up in jail. With the Maui pound note, that's the 970 million trillion trillion pound note, cut off out of that a trillion pounds each person's birth certificate. With the Maui pound note money, money, currency, instruments, up to and over the value of 970 million trillion trillion pound notes, Great Britain pound, pound notes, more or less the value of the Maui pound note for world trade and development of King, the King and the Paramount Chiefs commercial landowners' world's natural resources and his King's royal revenue. Inheritance claims for the benefit of our Maui Crown King William IV Trust shareholders throughout the world in 250 countries advertising the 1834 King's flag title over ex-Prime Minister John Key, <coughs> John Key, alleged criminal fraudster who libeled New Zealand justice system, ANZ, and Air New Zealand in his latest crimes of church and state, Queen Elizabeth II, sovereign authority, Crown Corporation's agents who have corrupted the New Zealand administration <coughs> of their private business judgments, debtors legally exposed and disclosed of its fact cited evidence, in brackets, proven beyond a doubt crimes these pirates facing herein lists listed below as threats against the Maui Crown King's Bench N Bank. Native Magistrate Court land patent commercial landowners, paramount chiefs as creditors over New Zealand and Pacific Island countries, security of interest, my crown, federal, state, parliament, pa paramount chiefs, Native Magistrate Courts, King's Superior, default, private contract, UK land laws. There's a default contract on those people. List of crown, corporate and private companies fraud and corrupted justice system offences. One, we're having them up for treason under this Execution of Judgment Act, 1831 C7 of King William IV Acts of Westminster Parliament, 1830-1837. And we're having them up, we're, we're using this writ of execution, position and control of property, as, uh, property arrest warrants, writs of execution Act, 1833 C67. I'm making this statement on this video as cited <coughs> for prosecution and we have already had prosecution and now it's to pick up the debts and seize the properties and all their business assets. One, treason. Two, economic terrorism. Three, that's terrorism. That's John Key gave Hillary Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, $13 million. He stolen off the public of New Zealand, defrauded them of that money and defrauded the Paramount Chiefs especially and myself the sheriff, registrar of the courts, the native courts, with his name as number one on the criminal justice court. Three, fraud and deception. Four, conspired to commit unlawful acts. That's that one there. Okay. I'm going through these pages. Five, murder. Six, kidnapping. Seven, theft. Eight, intimidation. Nine, crimes against humanity. Ten, crimes against the environment. Eleven, in the enslavement, 12, wrongful arrest and conviction, that was against me, arrested me, and lost the case as insufficient evidence. This is more evidence than them put together. They cannot take me into court again and try the same thing again because these are on them now. They are now cited as criminal, fraudsters, thugs and pirates, thieves and cheats. 13, bank rules. 14, impersonation of me, birth certificates and that. 15, identity theft, that's the birth certificate, as bonds. 16, memorial land title theft, that's the Maya statue and the land. 17, defrauded King William III, municipalities, St. Patrick's. Eight point star here, and sterling pound note. He stole this, John Key, and knighted themselves with our eight point star in the four corners of the earth. That's our title, that's not yours, John Key, that's not the Queen's, that's the Paramount Chief's contract with St. Patrick and my family of Rogans and <coughs> Cosgroves in Belfast, 
the St. Patrick buried there. The memorial is mine and my coat of arms. Thank you very much. That's my title. You are stealing from me, Chonky. You are stealing. You have no right. It's this or the one you've got over here. And King Ernest Augustus with eight points are is my title with him. And this eight points are you have no legal authority to use it. That's why I'm going you for that. Okay? I'm sticking you with these acts. Um, <clears throat> theft of our 1834, declaration of war, commercial contract, training bank flag. You're using this flag to make all your money. 20, Iwi Maori Crown, stolen the Hapu King William IV Crown Native Land Patent Title Authority. You took now our, our, our Hapu Whakapapa for your titles and screwed them. 21, New Zealand Crown defrauded the Moriori Manukau Paramount Chiefs Public of New Zealand and the Public of New Zealand. There. Now they're enforced by default of New Zealand Crown, Iwi Maori, unrebutted, non-performance, silent, no contest, admission of guilty as charged, name identified in individual, natural man, woman, child, and corporate sole person, person as a dead entity company who cannot speak for itself as a competent witness of its crimes committed on our commercial landowners' property land titles, we claim over the world under Moai Crown deeds of truth, spirit, earth, God created, law, L-O-R-E, L-A-W, jurisdiction and partnership with our kings. Okay? These acts are now enforced on third party living pirates named. And all those names are already in the book, this book here, as being on the register of defendants, failed to appear in court. They are all charged now, 21 of them for a start. These um, termination of lease of our New Zealand lands, call up the accounts. We are calling up the accounts and settling accounts and billing you before we boot you off the land and including Hey Hey up at Titi Marae, boot you off the land and you have nothing going for you. You have no titles like this, you have nothing but just your mouth. On Friday the 15th of April 2016, Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Native Magistrate Court to Friday the 27th and Saturday the 28th of October 2017 and into the future from here today on Titi Marae, Native Magistrate Court and in front of Tauranga Terra and Sisters Memorial, the live descendant, Paramount Chief's Executor, representing the Moriori, Paramount Chief's Tira Wakato Whareherere, Manikau, made a private commercial contract with his British business partner, King George IV, Crown Land Patent, as a co-owner over New Zealand Pacific Islands, Maui Crown Discovery title. The Paramount Chiefs now call up the New Zealand, New South Wales, Australian Crown Corporation account to this British UK Paramount Chief Tira Wakato Whareherere, Manukau, 1820 1830, King George IV, Deeds of Settlement. Title in front of the Whakamininga 13, Moriori, Tahitian, Ngāpui, Chiefs, Descendants, to 1830 to 1834, King William IV, Flag, Sovereign Authority, Jurisdiction as the Maya Crown, 1820, British, UK, Edinburgh, Scotland, Commercial Landowners, Title Holders of New Zealand and Pacific Islands, Discovery Title, Facts, Cited Evidence, Memorials and Legal Title, Patent, Instruments under Manukau, Parapara, Mohini, Mahoney Moriori, live executor, executive, ex, executive trustees. So there, I have uh, countersigned that and I will sign the one in full. That's the proof that I am acting in that capacity with that many titles on my head as surrogate kings. Okay, now we go into the acts. We were just about there. These are the acts of King William IV, Westminster Parliament starting from 1831 to 1837. So out of 1984 pages, I've pulled out 10 pages of just the acts that are lethal, that have no, no statutes added to them and not corrupted as what the New Zealand government and New, uh, and New South Wales government, Australia and Canada and America has corrupted these laws to suit themselves, okay? So I'm, I'm just, I've got the uh, main ones in slope letters away from the up and down because I made them all in black and white to make it cheaper to mass produce them or mass um, make, make um, six copies of books 
that uh, would cost a lot in colour. So the black and white is just like the old days. So I just want to read out the ones that are uh, in italic that way. And they are the ones I picked out as, as being on these people. Okay, on these, these people are named as data, uh, um, um, judgment debtors, and we being the judgment creditors put these acts on. I do that myself in that native court in Te Oonga Wakamarae from now on, that one. And all the other um, cases go through that until I put the new um, magistrate court up, native magistrate court up, the federal state government in Cornwall Park where Mohi Manaka want her. Okay, I'm going to build that and that's up to five billion for that. Okay, Execution of Judgment Act 1831 C7, that's in slope. And this is the ones that I've picked out. The Bankruptcy Court, England Act, 1831, C56. And they are stamped, there are the two stamps that go along with it, and we've initialed them here from the four Paramount Chiefs. We are four Paramount Chiefs. Okay, we've got the um, Office, Officers of Common Law Courts, 18, Act, 1831, C35. I'll rattle through these quickly. 1832. We have the um, 2 and 3 King William IV Acts of Westminster Parliament, Admiralty Act 1832, C40. That's the Admiralty Act that allows us to do the mortgages and foreclose on people and also the banks and the mortgages and to rescind all the, the people using those Admiralty Acts to make money out of leases on lands and also the, um, 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 the Admiralty being the um, master of all um, bank transactions and, and, and transfers of land, okay? Uh, um, Bankruptcy Act 1832, uh, England Act, uh, C114. Colonial Audit Revenues Act 1832, C26. So now that's that one. And we go on to the next part, that's still the same year, 1832. Uh, we go on to Crown Lands Act 1832, C1. We are the Crown. I'm, I'm talking as the crown, and I'm talking as the surrogate king, as if the king's away and there's no king until we put a king in, and that's King Ernest Augustus the fifth. He's already there, and his son, uh, Prince Regent Ernest Augustus, and so those are our two kings. We swear our oath of office to. And we swear our oath of office to those two paramount chiefs, uh, Te Wakato Farahere Manukau and uh, Hongihika, and we swear our oath of office to our other ancestors and also um, to God Almighty and to uh, my uh, Earth God, um, the statue uh, on East Island and also the ones that are in England um, and London and, and France, uh, Belgium, um, uh, New Zealand, North Island in Auckland, in Dunedin and that's the one with the crown on his head, that's how we were crowned in Dunedin, New Zealand and also in New York and Washington DC, uh, France and um, um, Chile, uh, San Diego, okay? So those are our titles in Singapore. Uh, so here we go. We've got um, Crown Lands Act, 1832, uh, C1. Um, Embezzlement Act, 1832, C4. Insolvent Debtors Island Act, 1832, C38. And we've got the Register of Deeds, uh, Ireland Act, 1832, C87. Sheriff of Sell, Kirk, Shire Act, 1832, C101. And then we'll put those are those ones. Yeah. Okay, I'm just writing just about there. Bank Notes Act 1833, C83, that's the pound note that we use. We've got the right to the act for our bank note. The Bank of England Act 1833, C98, that's the Bank of England. We're going bankrupt it and take it over. Uh, Court of Bankruptcy England Act 1833, C47, to bankrupt the Rothschild Bank and every other bank that's using our admiralty law. We use the admiralty law on you. And the courts of Chancery, uh, England Act 1833, C94, we use that because we're the Chancery Admiralty Law of the Sea. More just than that. Uh, Criminal Law Act 1833, C44, we use that act on anybody that's a third party. Crown, um, no, no, no. Fines and Recovers Act 1833, C74, we use that on Cook Street to recover all the debts and lock those, those um, um, thugs up in prison. And uh, we use that Fines and Recovers Act, 1833, C74. We use the Inheritance Act, 1833, C106, against the Moriori title, no, Manukau title. We're seizing back right back to 1820. We're claiming all the way through that's the 970 million trillion trillion pound note, right from that year, 209 years. 
um, judicial, oh no, hang on, Luna, Lunatics England's Act 1833 C64 on the third party thugs, they're lunatics up in Titi Marae, um, uh, hey hey, uh, he's a lunatic, so we put that act on him and uh, throw him in prison or we'll deal with one with him, sell him overseas. Um, police, no, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't muck around with these laws, they are lethal. That's why I was, I was saying what I said to them, they are lethal. Police Magistrate Metropolis Act, 1833, C19. There we are, that's the Metropolitan Act. Um, uh, Writs of Execution Act, 1833, C67. So, so we can use the writ of execution of any law on anybody, anywhere, anytime, anyhow. We want. Control Criminal Courts Act, 1834, C 36, we're on 1834 now, of King William for Acts of Westminster Parliament. Okay? East India Act, Company Act, uh, 1834, C33. Uh, Hanging and Chains Act, 1834, C26. We can hang anybody that's, that's extreme, like John Key. You, you, this is the one for you, Hanging and Chains Act, and the Queen. And that's why I say, oh, hang her under this Hanging and Chains Act, 1834, C26. That's what that one's for. Thugs and treason. The one treason, you get that straight on you. Or shot on site. Payment of credit to Scotland Act, 1834, C, 74, we put that on Cook Street, Owen, and all those other land blocks that I told them, I warned them, they're going to lose the whole lot, and this act goes on that, okay? Payment of credit to Scotland Act, 1834, because Scotland got the titles, the uh, native titles, and the instruments, the Freemasons, owns, all the instruments, I cannot deal with them, because all these legal documents put together as patent under Scottish rights, okay? So they're in it with me. Okay? Nobody else, just me. Trial of felonies in certain boroughs, Act 1834, C27, Auckland, Auckland Council. All the councils in this country are subject to under trials of felony, court of felony in certain boroughs, Act 1834. That's on all the councils here to open the books. Open the books, Bundy. You can force them to open the books under this trial of felonies in certain boroughs, Act in all the borough councils or any county councils, counties. Trust property is shit, is, is shit, Act N34 C23 for all the trusts to so open the books, open the books and investigate them, right, and, and audit them, okay, so that's that one, that's that one. Declaration of Act N35 C8, C8, we can investigate the N35 Declaration of Independence is a fraud, corrupted title, okay, that document and the N34 and the N40, uh, 1835, 1840 documents. Treaty White Jacket is fraud. It comes under the Declaration of Act N35, and that, that's that. Okay? The Declaration, etc., to be taken taken by Sheriff's Act N35, C25. So, anybody that wants to be a <coughs> Sheriff and do the job of what I'm doing, I'm the only one, will have to go for a Declaration to get this on their head to do the same job as me. You have to, because I'm going to England to do it over there. Okay? So, that's that one. The Administration of Justice, West Indies Act, 1836, C17, okay? And the Administration of Justice in Certain Boroughs, Act, 1836, C105. I'm citing all these acts, Bundy, uh, uh, is the Land Commissioner of New Zealand, Native Lands, and so he <coughs> can tell me what he wants to do, and I pull these out, and I enforce these with them. I'm the one with Manahi, he's uh, in Britain with me, uh, and his ancestor, Te Rawakato Wharehere in Manukau, and his transfer of title, sale and purchase agreement, to sell New Zealand Pacific Islands, and the Commonwealth countries of the world, where all the native titles came out of this title in New Zealand. Okay, so we got the Bankruptcy Island Act, 1836 C14, the Benefits Building Societies Act, 1836 C32, <coughs> Births, Deaths and Marriages, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act 1836, C86, that's the birth certificate with a trillion pound note. That's what we're putting on top of you, thugs. Yours is a hundred million and you only give me 26,000 for my gold card out of the hundred million that you keep for yourself. We've got a trillion on top of that as the birth certificate value of every mobile phone that we've got a number as a creditor, a judgment creditor, will get a mobile phone they are joining us online on the My Powerhouse Group Limited, Limited Company in London. And our company here, Nartoy Ewa, Altea Limited, one of a trillion shares, and all the other 250 countries got a billion shares at £25 a share to get in with your mobile phone. That's all the cost you one off, and the credit is yours. 
to claim all this back of the third party Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria Trusts and their corporations, Rothschild Banks and all the rest of them. So we've got um, um, Customs Act 1836, 60, uh, Ecclesiastical Leases Act 1836, C20, that's all the leases on the land, Crown leases, Erasures, Erasures um, in Deeds, Cotton Act 1836, C33, that's the deeds of land deeds and all that, they, those, they re erased them. Executions for Murder Act, 1836, C30. Insolvent Debtors, England Act, 1836, C44. Insolvent Debtors, Ireland Act, 1836, C23. Uh, Kingstown Harbours Act, 1836, C117. Land Tax Commissioners Appointment Act, 1836, C80. This applies to Bundy, the Land Commissioner, the Native Land Commissioner, under the Maui Crown. Everything under the Maui Crown here, and we can't do commercial in the Whakaminia and their, their upper house, they can't do commercial. This, this is the commercial law here. They have no commercial law and authority. They have to go through another system to get it. But I'm saying the buck stops here and there's only two in this. That's money in England and myself in England with this. But I'm going to England and money has to administer here from England and me on the other end. Okay, licensing. Ireland Act 1836 C38, uh, all the licenses, um, and Land Tax Commissioner's Appointment Act 1836 C80, I've got to get a Commissioner of Land Tax to collect up the tax 10% or what's whatever uh, it is, 7% for Britain. Okay? And these are all Britain. I'm going to the British law, not the laws here. They apply here to the land, but also in all the other countries in the world, under the flag. Uh, now we go to Offices of Clerks of the Crown and Clerks of the Peace, Ireland Act, 1836 C34. Officer of the, the Exchequer, Ireland Act, 1836 C83. We're just about there. Two more pages, right? Now we've got the Payment of Creditors, Scotland Act, 1836 C90. And we've got the Trials for Felony Act, 1836 C114. Valuations of Lands, Ireland Act, 1836 C84. I've valued all the lands up, okay? I've valued the lands up. And that's value on Cook Street. 2.715.800 billion for that 1.4 hectare block of land. Okay? If you split that into the size of New Zealand and the population, that's where I get the figures from to, uh, for the shareholders. Right, we go on to the Burglary Act, 1837.